Adobe Photoshop Beta has a very interesting AI tool called, called Generative Fill. Let's look what it can do. I have some sample images to show you how it can make your editing much, much faster. It's mind blowing. Look at, for example, this image from Athens. It's the old, old Olympic Stadium and there are some tourists around. And if I want to get rid of them, I just use the lasso tool and make them go away. And look at this. And there's also ability to add some object to the image if you want. Let's put a cat on the first, what do you call this? You know, the winner's podium or whatever. Let's put a cat there. And look at this, a white cat. And look, there are some interesting things. You can see the reflection, a slight reflection because it's a shiny podium. And then look at the direction of the light. Just perfect. It's almost perfect. Not quite, but almost perfect. And this makes this tool really interesting. And getting rid of the tourist from the original image to make it empty is something that you might want to do when you are in a tourist site or, or somewhere and there is someone blocking the view. You can just get rid of that with the generative fill. Yeah, generative fill. I always try to remember what it is and can't. It's a hard word for me. And then I have this image. I pre-visualized this, that there would be someone in the front, a, a kind of like a silhouette in the front and not too many people in the background. But it was a busy square in Athens and you know, this is what I got. Then I decided to test how it works with this new AI tool. And one by one, I removed all the people and I have an empty square with only the one person in there. But to be honest, it looked a bit empty. So I turned off the layers for these two people and I can get them back. And if you look at the image, it's almost perfect. Of course, there are some imperfections in the background, but if you don't know how the real place actually was, it doesn't really matter. I will talk about a bit about the ethics of this and is this something that you should do or not. But let's look at this image. A huge crowd in front of Acropolis and Look what happened when I used the AI tool. First, I wanted to use it only to the person in the front because it's kind of like photobombed my image. But then I decided to try if it can do or what kind of job it can do with removing all the tourists from the shot, except the one lady with taking a selfie there. And voila, I think it's pretty good. It needs some work and I also try to uh, take away the construction things when they're renovating the thing or fixing the Acropolis, the Parthenon temple. But that was a bit too hard for, for AI to do. But I guess in the future you could remove those two and make it look authentic, that I would say. Then I had this shot. This was from Athens and there was some tourist thing that you could get your photo taken with a nice background and uh, this bunch of people were there in, in kind of like, you know, the image didn't come out because they were there. So I removed them and look at this, a lot, lot better image. But as I said, I will talk about the ethics a bit about this. Is this something that you should do or not? Then I have this old image that I screwed up. There was this lady with the dog and I messed up with the focusing. So I decided to test if the dog can be replaced. And yes, it can. It doesn't look very natural yet, but when this tool evolves and gets better, I think we could just remove the dog and replace it with another one and it looks natural. Now it doesn't really look that natural. It needs some image editing, further editing, but I didn't do it on this one, but I just wanted to show it how it works as it is. Then I have this couple walking towards me in a small alley. This is a image from Mallorca for like five years ago I was there. And I liked the image, but then there was the car. But look at this. I tested the AI tool from Photoshop Beta and it can get rid of the car. And if you look at closely, you can really see that you can't tell if there was something or not. It is very, very natural. Then I have this image also from Mallorca, which uh, I saw the situation, I think it was a fun situation, but there were too many distracting things. It's okay image like this, but you can see the ad and you can see that there are quite a lot of pigeons and the one doesn't have the head at the 
right position, so I want to get rid of those and leave only one pitch in there. But then you can still see the ad, which is a little bit distracting. But with the help of AI, I can replace it with a concrete wall and it looks quite natural. Nobody knows if you don't know what the, the uh, original image was. And I think all this will change the way we edit images. But then there is the question of the ethics. If we are doing street photography like this, mainly where, is that the right way to do? Because usually when we do street photography, we want to do so-called straight photography, that we don't alter the things that happened. But then again, if it's a piece of art and it looks better with the uh, help of AI and removing objects, why not do it? I think the end image matters and if it's a thing that could have happened, then maybe you could do it. But of course, if you're doing documentary photography or photojournalism, this is a big no-no. Or some uh, um, nature photography competition, this is a big no-no. Don't do it. You will, you know, it, it, it'll ruin the whole thing. And the same goes slightly with street photography. I prefer images that are made and not cropped that much afterwards. Or if you're making an image and you don't have a longer lens, but you, you kind of like pre-visualize how you're going to crop it, then I think it's good. But if um, you just want to make the image better as a piece of art, then by all means do this. What is your take on this? How, how do you see the ethics of this? Is this something that you would do or do you think is, it's total nonsense and this should not be done to images like I have here? What do you think about that? What's, what's your take on that? Please let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to try that, you need to have a Creative Cloud account from Adobe. And if you do, just go uh, log in and click the Creative Cloud icon and go to Beta Apps and download Photoshop Beta. If you are a member of Core or you have the subscription for Creative Cloud, you will have this option. It's something for you to try. It's a really interesting thing. And it's going to be in the regular uh, update or, or in the next update from uh, of Photoshop. Most likely this will be in the regular Photoshop. And it's going to be there. Do we like it or not? But uh, what is your take? Let us know in the comments down below. And here are some more, maybe it's over that side, some more videos about image editing. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.